Welcome to the Blind Guy Show Radio. Here's your host, Greg. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Greg, and welcome back to the Blind Guy Show. Today I thought I would talk a little bit about how I use my Bluetooth keyboard when it's paired to my iPhone using VoiceOver. All right, about six months ago, I did a lot of research, and I went ahead and I purchased a Bluetooth keyboard. Uh, I went with the Logitech K480 Bluetooth keyboard uh, for a number of reasons. The price point, and, well, it just seemed to be a recommended peripheral for the iPhone. So this keyboard cost around $40 on Amazon, which I thought was perfect for everything that it does. So this keyboard can be paired with three different devices at one time. It can be paired with Apple devices, such as iPhones, iPads, or even with a Mac computer. Or it can be paired with Android devices or a Windows PC, which I think is great. And this can be done by a selector dial on the upper left-hand side of the keyboard. So the way you pair this keyboard to your phone is you select where you want your device on the selector dial on the left hand side of the keyboard and on the right hand side of the keyboard there are two buttons the left hand side being for Android devices and Windows PCs on the right hand side of the button is for Apple devices iPhones iPads and Mac computers so to pair this with my iPhone I will go into settings I will then go into Bluetooth. I would then press the right hand side of that button at the top of the keyboard on the right hand side for four seconds to pair it with an iDevice and then keyboard K480 connected. I've already connected to mine. So for some Bluetooth keyboards, you may have to punch in a four digit code and then press enter on the keyboard in order to pair it. This one, I did not have to do that. So the setup was very simple. So now that my keyboard is paired, here's a little bit about how I use it. So I can press control and up arrow to get to the top of the home screen. That takes me to the top left of the screen, the first app on the screen, and I could do the opposite by pressing control down arrow. Messages. That takes me to the bottom right hand corner of my screen in the dock. So I can flick to the left and right by using the left and right arrow keys. So I'm going to use the left arrow key to go back up the screen. Safari. Mail. What? Phone. Page two or three. Adjustable. Home. Page two or three. Adjustable. I can also adjust the screen. So this is like a like flicking up or down. Page three or three. Page two or three. Home. Extras folder. Jump folder. Notes. Actions available. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the Jump folder. Nine apps. Notes. Notes Actions app. Available. To activate an item, you press the up and down arrows at the same time. Notes. That button. Notes. Heading. So I know that the new note button is in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, so I can press control down arrow. And then I can press the up and down arrows at the same time to activate. Okay, so new note is editing. Insertion point at start. Quick nav is off. Now, quick nav is something that you should really know about if you're using a Bluetooth keyboard with your iPhone. This is similar to forms mode when you're using a PC with a screen reader like JAWS or NVDA. And to turn quick nav on and off, you press the left arrow and the right arrow at the same time. Listen. Quick nav on. Quick nav is kind of like the browse mode using NVDA or JAWS. So with quick nav off, I can then enter text into form fields, edit fields, and the body of like an email. Quick nav off. Okay, so I'm quick nav is off, and now I can type, and I will just type. Uh, F T space test N T E space 
space note. M B E R space number one. Period one. Okay. All right, so I have my little note here, and I can then go back and read this letter by letter by pressing the left arrow in case I want to make some adjustments to my text. Period one space R E B M U N space E T O N space T S E top top of document. Okay, I can also go word by word by pressing Option and right arrow Test. or left arrow. And of course, I can access the rotor by pressing up arrow and right arrow, Sitting right. or up arrow and left arrow. Text selection, lines, words, characters, edit. And if I'm in the edit field of the rotor, I can then press up and down arrow Paste. Select all. to go through the selections in there. Main checklist item, set bold, set italic, set underline, indent right, select, paste. And this makes my iPhone so much more productive. I can type out notes, I can write emails, I can surf the internet, and I can make Facebook posts so much easier. I can even use this in iMovie when I am editing videos. For the price point of about $38 to $40, you really can't go wrong with this keyboard. Um, it comes with batteries pre-installed. They are not rechargeable batteries. I think they're just AAAs. But that's a plus that they come with the batteries. And I like the fact that you can pair this keyboard with three devices. And it's not just limited to Android or Apple devices. You can even pair this with a Windows machine. Uh, it is kind of clunky. I don't know if you can hear this, but it, it's kind of... I'm kind of twisting it. And it's kind of rickety. Uh, it, it is sturdy, it just makes a lot of noise. And the keys are kind of loud too, but that's not a big deal for me. But a downfall of the keys that I don't like is they're kind of round and cylindrical, kind of like an old-fashioned typewriter, and they're very springy. So you really have to push down on them to get them to pass a letter through. Now this keyboard does not have a, a number pad, but that's not really a big deal for me. I don't really need it. But it is a full-size keyboard. It's pretty large. It's not a keyboard that you could just throw in your pocket. This is more, more like something that you would have to throw into a backpack in order to take it with you. So overall, I have to say that this is a pretty wonderful keyboard for the price compared to some of the other ones out there. Like the Apple Magic keyboard, I think runs around $100 and up. So for $38 to $40, I have to say this is a very worthwhile investment. Well, I think this just about does it for me, folks. If you have any questions about how to use a Bluetooth keyboard, or if you would like me to do a tutorial on how to use a Bluetooth keyboard when paired with an iPhone using voiceover, let me know in the comments down below. So I hope everyone has a happy Thursday, and I will see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to the Blind Guy Show Radio. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel and turning on post notifications so you don't miss any more great content.